River otter poop. Why is it important? Hiking takes on a whole new meaning when you're looking for the gross stuff, as I found out when I braved the trails of the Smithsonian Environmental Research Center in Edgewater, Maryland recently. If right? by gross you mean fascinating, you are correct. <laughs> but it turns out you can learn a lot from the moment's duty calls for the Chesapeake Bay's cutest furry apex predator. So these little shell piles here, those are all old river otter poop. Dr. Katrina Lohan, the head of the Coastal Disease Ecology Lab at Cirque, told me they call these piles sprints. The more we looked, the more we found. And here, here. Katrina says their ongoing North American river otter poop study is fueled by the need to understand one crucial thing. Parasites are extremely ecologically important. Across the nearly 3,000 acres and 15 miles of shoreline on Cirque's campus, there are several specific sites where they've set up otter cams. At these latrines, otters show up repeatedly to eat, or just for vibes and a good hang. More on that in a second. So there's claw marks of where they've tried to like hoist themselves up over to get onto the dock. And they do have multiple river otters who come up. We've had up to eight in one frame of a camera. These cameras capture important data without staff having to interfere with the animals directly. We refer to latrines as the area in which river otters will come up onto land. I was gonna say, there's not a designated area. <laughs> It's not like a litter box, yeah. <laughs> it is actually, okay. I mean, similar in concept. Otters use these latrines as sort of social communication hubs. Think of it as finding out who else is living in your neighborhood. Katrina says otters will often use scent marking to gauge the local population and even find out what females are available for mating. See, otters break the cardinal rule of not eating where, you know, which leads us back to parasites. Humans don't exist in a bubble outside of nature, right? We, we are dependent upon nature for our own needs. Otters are mammals, just like us, and their diet consists of a lot of the same foods humans eat, like fish and blue crab. And since they're using the bathroom at their dining room table, they can pretty easily contract a bug or two. We can learn about what parasites are here that could potentially infect humans as well. Katrina says their poop can tell us a lot about how our Chesapeake Bay ecosystem is faring overall. We can look through the food web by using them at the top. Next week, in my final episode of this series, we'll look at how scientists actually take these otter samples back to the lab to analyze them for DNA. Here inside the lab at Cirque with Katrina, I'm Matt Koufax. Thank you so much for having me out on the trail today. I bet you never look at poop the same way again. I will not. WTOP News. We have a great video of an otter sitting this way with its back turned here, eating this ginormous fish and a raccoon comes up from behind, <laughs> whacks it on the butt, the otter turns, the raccoon steals the fish and then runs up the, you oh. can like hear it going up the gangplank.